Hey, brothers and sisters, welcome to another time of Bible teaching. We're looking at the barley. Was it of Eve? Um, okay, we're going to look at a couple of things. And unfortunately, the bottom line, and it's still inconclusive. Um, and years ago, many years ago, it would be the priests that would have made that declaration. Well, since Constantine helped Israel standardize their calendar, which means they took it off of God's standard, they de-standardized it. Um, they don't do that. So, you know, we're left looking at the barley, trying to figure it out. Is it of Eve or not? What, else, what does he mean? Is the barley of Eve? All right, let's go to scripture. Um, we're going to go a couple places real quick. So let me open up my Bible here. I want you to go to Exodus 12, 2. We'll start in 1. And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, direct quote from God, this month shall be the beginning of months for you. It shall be the first month of the year to you. And people use to say, God, change the calendar. Rosh Hashanah got moved to the spring. Really? Speak to the congregation of Israel. On the 10th of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for the household. And, it, and, it, and if the household is too small for the lamb, you know, read on down. Let's go skip down real quick and go down to the 14th day. Now, you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight. And actually, that word twilight is not twilight. It's something like between the twilights, between two things. It's 3 p.m. in Hebrew. That's how it reads. And that's the exact time that Messiah gave up his life the same time that the Passover lamb would be dying. So we see that this month is Nisan. This is the, what we call today Nisan. It is the Passover, and it is the first month of the year. If you checked in Leviticus 23, yep, Passover is the first month, and Rosh Hashanah is the seventh month. Everything is in order. This was a second calendar that was added. And for if you ever wonder, I got some people that would ask questions about what the flood, what would be the month? Okay. Anything in the Bible before this, it said the first month, the seventh month, or whatever, you adjust it by six months. Okay. It just changed it, it changed the first month because it shall be the beginning of months. Rosh Hashanah is still the beginning of the year. There are two first months, two calendars. Okay. Go to Deuteronomy 16, get this out of the way, and then we'll get into some reports. Observe the month of Abib and keep the Passover to the Lord your God. For in the month of Abib, the Lord brought you, the Lord your God brought you out of Egypt by night. So that word Abib is the name for Nisan from years ago, and actually before the dispersion to Babylon, got to say that, no other month have a name. Um, so Abib is actually more of a description when you look at the word. And let's look at the definition. It talks about the barley, fresh young barley ears, barley. The month of ear forming, the greening of the crop, the growing of green abib, the month of Exodus and Passover. So it's in the spring, it's when the barley is almost ripe. And the bottom line is that on, I always thought it was Nissan 1, and this year I saw something where it said you could go to Nissan 10 to see if Nissan started. Um, because on Nissan 14, at evening, um, that the Nissan 14, it starts, the day starts at twilight. So it's actually into what we would think 15. It's into that Thursday. Nissan uh, 13 would start on a Wednesday night, but it's in the following afternoon that Messiah would be crucified. Um, so that would be on the 15th. Actually, he's crucified, but um, right now, the calendar says it's 8R2, the 13th of 8R2. Interesting. Now, there is an 8R, but is there anything in the Bible that talks about leap months? No, that's what Constantine did or encourages we to do to standardize their calendar. It's not biblical. 
this is how today Israel keeps all the months in the year, um, the spring in the spring and the fall in the fall, and make sure that the calendar works just like we use leap years to do that. They use leap months. It's not biblical. It's not how God keeps his calendar. So every year they would check the barley. If the barley's ripe, then we start the year. That's how God did it. What's interesting is God set this up probably back before when it was a 360-day calendar. It was actually a 360-day calendar. Something happened to change that throughout history. I've had a couple of people point to different places when the calendar could have changed, but God knew that ahead of time. So he had this system already in mind. Okay, we've been looking at Deborah's date tree, a site that I often go to. So let's take go there. And they recently did a um they recently did an article on March 20th, so two days ago, and I've just been real busy. I wanted to get this one out earlier about the barley. And you can I'm gonna include this link in the description, and they give you verses and everything. Um, a field was planted in the worm stage. Interestingly, the farmer had smashed the stalks into the into bundles. Presumably, he plans on cutting them soon for silage. This volunteer across the street from field one was also in worm stage. The planted field had almost empty seeds, with a few in worm and a vave stage. A few in a vave stage. This field across from the street, field three, was mostly empty a few in worm and a, and a vive stage. Now seeing that, okay, you can read through this and that's basically saying they saw a little bit of eve, a little bit almost right. I don't think this is enough to start. I don't know. I'm not the priest that declares it. This website does not do that. They, get, they try to give you the information for you to make the fall. So I did some looking around because I had somebody else said, hey, there's, there's, um, some uh, contradictory reports out there. So I came up to this one, and this is a group, Hebrew in Israel, Barley Conditions, and they had done this on March 13th, which would have been, um, what, how long ago? A week or 10 days ago. So this would have been done kind of closer to the um, beginning of the year. And if you read through this, they're seeing quite a bit of Aviv. And if I'd have read this, I'd have said, yep, the barley is Aviv. But I look at both of these, and to bottom line, I can't tell the difference. Um, if we go, I can't make that call. Let's go down to where it says observations. All right. In this place, the majority of the barley observed was in soft dose stage with sporadic of view. Um, considerable amounts of headed barley seen. Um, barley was mainly found in the flowering stages with a small amount of dose stage. Um, I'm not an expert on barley. You know, I only started really last year looking at the barley to understanding this. Before that, I always say, well, we know the Jewish calendar is off, so with Rosh Hashanah, let's add a month. Let's give it another month. Let's give it another month. I didn't know why. Now I know why. How? Um, very close to Aviv and Aviv barley. And again, this was done about the first of the month. Um, the highway was very close to becoming a Aviv and a lesser per percentage in the Aviv stage. So if I read this one, I said, yep, barley's Aviv, the month started. Put them two together, I'm not sure. It's inconclusive. So what I would say is that I'm going to go with the calendar that's on the table, that we are not in Nissan yet. Uh, we'll figure everything as I look that way. Understanding that everything could be a month off. And it means that things could happen a month early. You know, we get to Rosh Hashanah and everybody's like, oh, give it another month. No, 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 no. Well, Rosh Hashanah is scheduled for October 2nd, 3rd, 4th, whenever they see the new moon. It's possible it could be set beginning of September. Now, somebody's out there thinking this, because I know I've thought this before. But it's a fall feast day. 
It's a fall appointed time. It has to happen after the fall equinox. No, it doesn't. There is nothing in the Bible about a fall equinox. They, we use the term spring and fall appointed times or a feast days as a convenience. I've had people point to, and this while I'm here, just throwing this out in case somebody's got a question. I've had people point to this verse and saying, that's an equinox. In John, Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in a day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of the world. Well, this is not talking about like a rapture or feast days. You have to understand how they did calendars. They didn't have watches. Oh, I don't have a watch. Now, we have phones now. Phones replace our watches. They didn't have a phone where they could look and see the times. Okay? They had sundials. So every day would be broken up into 12 hours. The daylight portion. The night was watches. Okay? So every day had 12 hours. Just an hour was not necessarily 60 minutes as we know them. In the summer, when the sun's out longer, an hour lasted longer than in the winter when the sun wasn't up as long. That's how they did time back then, with their sundials. So, again, it doesn't have to be in the fall. Anyhow, um, I wish this was more conclusive. I wish I understood more about the barley and the different stages when I read. But my assumption and my understanding what I've read is a beeb and then ready. And on the Feast of first fruits, I should walk through that real quick. Yeah, let's do that. Let's go to Leviticus 23, just so you get the whole picture. See on the, um, it's okay. It doesn't tell you this here, but we read it in Deuteronomy 16. On the third, let's go back there then. Let's walk through this whole sequence real quick so you get the whole picture. No, nope, we got to go to, it was Hebrews. My apology, um, my apology, Exodus 12 is where we want to go. Back to Exodus 12. See, on the 10th day of the month, On the 10th day of the month, every man should take for himself a lamb according to the house of his father, a lamb for the household. See, and when you look at for the house, it's house, temple, synagogue. Messiah was our Passover lamb. On the 10th of the month, he came into the temple. And, and the whole reason to bring him in there is you want to examine it because this lamb cannot have any flaws. It's got to be flawless. It has to be without spot, without blemish. Messiah had to be without spot and without blemish. So before he was crucified, everyone who was anybody was questioning him. And the end result was they found no fault. So you would do this for four days. So Messiah had to be in the temple for four days. And he came in on, on um, what we know as Palm Sunday. And it's interesting, I had a conversation with somebody, an intelligent person, who was insisting he, Messiah was crucified on a Wednesday, and they asked me if I could prove it. If it was on a Sunday, and the answer is no. I can't prove that from Scripture. But what's interesting is because he was convinced Messiah was crucified on a Wednesday. And if Messiah was crucified on a Wednesday, back up four days, and that, you, that would put Messiah coming into Jerusalem, riding on a colt. What was he riding on? Lamb, sheep, colt. Not a colt. Sorry, I'm sorry, a donkey. On the Sabbath. You're not allowed to have your animals work on the Sabbath. There is no way Messiah rides into Jerusalem on a donkey on the Sabbath. Wednesday doesn't work. Anyhow, so for four days, that lamb would be in there. So that's why, um, that's the point where you got to make the call. And that's why um, Deborah's date tree was saying you had up until the 10th to make the call. So let's go back real quick to Leviticus 23. Let's 
So on the 14th day at twilight, again, that word is not necessarily twilight, and it's not going to show up in definitions. You have to look at it, read it in Hebrew, which I can't. Okay, so that's when it's the Lord's Passover. That's when you sacrifice it. And it would, you know, if you looked up, you have to understand that day starts at in the evening. Okay, so it was Passover when they had come and taken Messiah and he was illegally, illegally held court at night. And, you know, throughout that whole day, that is on Nisan 14. But if we look up Nisan 14 on a calendar, it's going to give you us the date that it starts if you try to convert it to our pagan calendar. So anyhow, the 15th day is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. That's when Messiah is in the grave. Um, and that is a Sabbath. So whatever day that he's crucified on, the next day is always a Sabbath. Then you come to first fruits. This is the thing right here. And we'll, we'll just read the whole thing. Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, when you come into the land which I give you and reap its harvest, then you shall bring a sheath of first fruits of your harvest to the priests. You shall wave the sheath of the Lord, uh, of sheath before the Lord to be accepted on your behalf. On the day after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. A couple things here. You have to have right the barley has to be ripe to do this. That's why it has to be a bead. That's why the month starts the way it does. I don't think it did. I'm not sure. Notice also Messiah would have been, and this is the day that Messiah arose. He's the first fruits of the resurrection to life. Scripture makes it clear he did not arise on the Sabbath. He arose on the day after the Sabbath. Um. And then you can go down and read the rest. So that's what we're trying to find out. At this point, my gut says it didn't start, but my gut is not scripture. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Anyhow, thank you for watching. God bless you. Have a great day.